Everyone! 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 What's up? How much time will it take for these maggots to eat something? The first thing we'll put in this tank is gonna be a burger. I would of course prefer to eat this myself, but as they say, for the sake of science. If you can actually call this science. Well, never mind. Bon appetit, comrades. We're basically planning to watch all these maggots devour the burger, but they have other plans from the start. This is all that's visible of the burger in a way. I'm afraid that if we let this go as it stands now, then we're not even going to find out how long it will take them to eat the burger. So I suggest we make some adjustments. <laughs> nope, I don't want to fix this. Even if it's still barely visible from this vantage, I suggest we find a better way. I tell you what, <laughs> this is a pretty poor sight. I wouldn't dare eat this burger. Well, anyway, we have a smaller tank. I hope they don't drown it like they did. All right then, we're gonna observe what happens to this burger. Poor burger. The moment that I placed the burger inside the tank, the maggots started showing interest in it. Though, at first glance, it wasn't even clear if they were even eating it or not. It just seemed that way, as if all they were doing was climbing all over it. But within five minutes, our doubts were completely quelled when we saw one maggot that had appeared on top. It chewed its way through to the top. By the end of it, the maggots ended up spreading out all over the burger, onto the bun, into the toppings, all of it. They had this kind of wild appetite. So with that being said, let's observe just how long it takes them to devour it whole. Despite the fact that we have more than enough maggots inside this tank, and although 36 hours have passed by already, it appears that they still haven't completely finished the burger. They gutted the bun off the top, sliced up the vegetables, and the most striking aspect about this is it seems to me they haven't really even touched the meat. Even though these things are <laughs> meat fly larvae, I don't fully understand why they avoided eating any of the meat. Perhaps it's possible it's connected to the meat having been pasteurized. I'd say that it's perfectly obvious that the maggots have lost any interest in the burger. And on that note, it's hardened. I suppose it would be difficult for them to eat something hardened. Though in essence, wherever the burger remains soft, the maggots dug into it with a solid appetite. Just stop and consider this. These maggots ate a burger. How did these tiny manifestations take bites out of this burger? It would be incredibly interesting to observe how the phenomena happens up close, though I'm worried that this is beyond our technical capabilities, since the maggots are constantly shifting around so quickly. However, if the maggots stop moving around, then in principle it should be possible to even get a glimpse of its mouth and more. Thankfully, we have a macro lens for such an occasion. Guys, don't freak out here. This ugly looking maggot this is its ass. Yeah, that's right. It looks pretty damn creepy. That's for sure. But I believe you'll think again when you take a look at its face. Yeah, in my opinion, this looks a lot worse off. If you take a general glance at its face, it comes off as kind of a tiny monster with some sort of fangs, or almost like a kind of extraterrestrial monster. In addition to this particular maggot, we decided to take a look at the others, and we noticed that their faces are all quite different than one another, despite the fact that when viewed with the naked eye, they all appear to look exactly alike. 
I have a feeling that whatever I've just witnessed is gonna haunt me in my dreams. It doesn't get any creepier than this. Take it easy now, Mamex. Everything is fine. They're just maggots. They aren't gonna eat you. And besides, what if you've already fed them something different? In contrast to the burgers, these ones had strawberries, and they wolfed it down especially fast, within 20 hours. This is literally all that's left of them. I suggest we keep them going and throw them their next meal. As we can plainly see, these maggots have really started chowing down on this cucumber. So violently, actually, that they're moving it around. It appears as though they are kind of drowning it in order to eat it from the inside out. However, once we extracted the cucumber, I was very disappointed to see it hadn't visibly changed in the slightest, even though they've been at it now for six hours. I'm assuming it's connected to the cucumber having a fairly tough rind, and now we've learned that they don't eat that. Therefore, I've decided to peel it right in order to make it easier for them. After that, the maggots crawled around more vigorously and started climbing all over the cucumber, not only from the bottom, but also slugging over the top of it. This went on for a long while. When it was over, they drowned the cucumber once more, and when I took it back out, I saw the same thing. <laughs> the cucumber hadn't changed at all, despite the fact that it had been like this for about 12 hours. I gave them one more opportunity. Conclusion, result, zero especially compared to the strawberries. Yeah, even if you contrast it with the burger, this was without a doubt unaffected. This right here is what the previous subjects came out like after 20 hours, and what the cucumber looks like after 20 hours. Reminding you that we peeled it ourselves. The maggots devour the strawberries gleefully. They barely touch the cucumber. What does it mean? Do maggots have some type of food preferences? Well, what do you know? Though there's no way I could have anticipated that without having done the experiment. But I was curious to see what kind of food they'd choose if given the choice. I prepared some regular bread for them, as well as a sweet donut, pickled cucumber, a sour lemon, a hot pepper, a bitter radish, some smoked sausage, and regular meat. I've also prepared two other dishes with a twist. The first is a rotten apple. The second, rotten meat. I am certain this will stink when open, so I've got a mask with me, just in case. I hope it helps me out. Uh, just nasty. This smells like crap, just absolutely disgusting. Why do the last two foods have to be rotten? I guess because out in nature, maggots love things that are rotten. It would be very interesting observing the reaction of just one maggot, because when they're numerous, it's as if they're running around like a herd. And doing it this way, he'll have plenty of time, and it'll be able to make an informed decision. I'm not sure if it's by coincidence or not, but for some reason the maggot has paused next to the rotten meat. I can't tell if this decision came to him consciously, or if it's just because... Now I'm curious. Have a look. Where's the maggot? Alright, well, I've decided to pour out all of the maggots we have and observe what ends up happening. Basically, just like the previous time, the maggots are climbing all over the meat. There are no maggots to be found on any of these products. They're sort of hovering in the vicinity of them, the rotten meat, all over it. Everything that happened after this turned out to me to be the strangest bit, because at first the maggots were eating the rotten meat. Then they suddenly transferred to the left side where the bread was. And when all was said and done, the 
almost nothing. What is there even to say at last? I honestly have no idea. After living with maggots for almost a week now, I still don't get them. What they desire and how they really think. 